Hey everyone, hope you're reading well. Here's another quick book review. Just a disclaimer, I've only been looking at books that happen to be in my room. I'm self-isolating during COVID and so this is more a review of books that I've read in the last year or so. My reading taste will be a bit more diverse in the future, next year say. Today we're going to be talking about The Present Age by Soren Kierkegaard, first published in 1846. I'll begin with a quote. A revolutionary age is an age of action. Ours is the age of advertisement and publicity. Nothing ever happens, but there is immediate publicity everywhere. In the present age, a rebellion is, of all things, the most unthinkable. And so with that, I think what this book is getting at is the general spiritual void that we're all experiencing in Western society where there are many adults seeking for some greater purpose or overarching sense of meaning in their lives that goes beyond sex, politics, or their career. And suffice it to say that there is just so much wisdom in this small book of two essays by Soren Kierkegaard who lived over 150 years ago. This book is successfully predicts many major features of modern society, namely the Communist Manifesto. On the other hand, a political virtuoso might bring off a feat almost as remarkable. He might write a manifesto suggesting a general assembly at which people should decide upon a rebellion, and it would be so carefully worded that even the censor would let it pass. At the meeting itself, he would be able to create the impression that his audience had rebelled, after which they would all quietly go home, having spent a very pleasant evening. The Internet on the other hand, a scientific virtuoso might draw up a subscription form outlining an all-embracing system which he purposed to write and, what is more, in such a way that the reader would feel he had already read the system. For the age of encyclopedists, when men wrote gigantic folios with unremitting pains, is gone. The Overbearance of Capitalism Nowadays, a young man hardly envies anyone his gifts, his art, the love of a beautiful girl, or his fame. He only envies him his money. Give me money, he will say, and I am saved. Political correctness. Whereas our generation is serious, even at banquets. Social identities. There is no such thing as a public. There are parties, and they are concrete. The press, in times such as those, takes on a concrete character according to the division of parties. He's so ahead of his times, this was written over 150 years ago, but it still helps me understand what is going on in the world today. And if this wasn't enough to show you this book can give you a better understanding of the world, reading Søren Kierkegaard was a pivotal point in my reconversion back to Christianity from strong atheism. So these books carry a punch to them. And this reminds me of the importance reading a book can have on your actual life. So let's take a step back and go over some author background and then I'll very briefly summarize this book and try to convince you that it's definitely worth reading. Kierkegaard is charmingly contrarian. He reminds me very much of Oscar Wilde and embodies Oscar Wilde's quote, everything popular is wrong. And he's probably as funny and relatable as philosophy gets. Ludwig Wittgenstein called him by far the most profound thinker of the 19th century, which is a strong statement given the same is arguably true for Wittgenstein of the 20th century. Kierkegaard was the founder of the existential school of philosophy. First he invented the classic term existential dread, which we've all heard before in his book The Concept of Anxiety. He then grappled with the, his meaninglessness of existence without a god in either or and then after his conversion in his later works he provided intellectually satisfying new definitions of faith and sin that i think are really insightful and he did this whilst also bashing the church and this these were in his books fear and trembling and in the sickness unto death Kierkegaard contrasts heavily with his successor, Nietzsche, in advising people what to do in a society where the church has lost power. I believe Kierkegaard's response is both funnier and healthier than Nietzsche's. And to those of you on my wavelength, Kierkegaard 
and Jung are in the light, whereas Nietzsche and Freud are in the dark. And together they form a unified view of an individual's response to God. As Western societies rediscover spirituality in the coming decades, I really hope there's a renewed interest in Kierkegaard. I think it's a great shame that most Christians don't read beyond the Bible to have any way of debating with post-war concepts that most atheists hold to be their strong truths. So now, on to the book. So the physical lowdown is 118 A5 pages with a 31 page forward, 62 page essay against societal norms, restricting freedom, and a 25 page essay just against priests. The fact that the forward is longer than the second essay reminded me of Nabokov's Pale Fire in the sense that editors can be overbearing and try write more than the author themselves. However, I think this is a good introduction to Kierkegaard. It gives a nice wide perspective and if anything it shows that with how few words Kierkegaard can ignite such a long and interesting discussion. If you're skeptical of religion or society at large, then Kierkegaard is definitely an author for you because he is the beginning of that historical discourse. He is essentially society's very first rebel. And it's worth reading for his wit and intellectual tact in approaching rebellion. This is the best start for anyone who wants to read Kierkegaard. I think it would be a mistake for me to recommend anything other by this author for someone new to his writings. His biography gives no real grasp of his actual work, and his main works might be too complex, dense, and focused for new readers of his work or of philosophy in general. I'm giving this a four star as I would strongly recommend this to Iconoclasts or anyone interested in debates or critiques of modern Western society. This is the best introduction for Kierkegaard. It will be too general for people seeking too much, and I wouldn't recommend it to everyone as it's controversial. I read most of this on a coach for a summer day trip to Ottawa after I just failed an exam and I needed some, I needed a break from the city, I needed some wider perspective and this book gave me just that, it made me smile and it made me feel more connected with what was going on in the world. I'll cover Kierkegaard's main works in later videos but until then, happy reading!